Sabbath peace. Sabbath peace. It's another opportunity for us to come together and hear and learn of the word, the truth, as given to us by the Most High God. All honor goes to the Father through the Son, whose name is Yahushua. In him lies the only hope for salvation. We know that it is obtained by grace through faith, not of works, lest anyone should boast and give him freely as a gift to all who obey him. We understand that if we do not obey him, it is made manifest or made obvious that we do not believe. In this state, we should expect no good thing from the Most High. However, anything that we do get, whether it be a gift of tongues, a gift of prophecy, or any supernatural experience that we may have, it can and it will be used against us in the day of judgment. That said, peace to the saints that are in the room, to the saints that couldn't make it, but no peace to the wicked. The only thing we say to them is repent that they might live. Let's go ahead and, uh, you know what I mean, open up to... Uh, I don't know. What you got for me, Daniel? What are we working on? Uh, Malachi. Uh, Ooh, you can't prepare this time. Malachi? I just, I just went to something. All right. All right. All right. Well, I ain't going to let you take the whole thing. Baby, what we got? You know what I'm saying? Malachi, give me a number. Two? All right. Good number. Malachi, two. Danielle, what we working with? Ten. Okay. Malachi, two, ten. You went to it first? You cheated. She went to it first. She saw something. She went, oh, this is a word for me today. You know, Danielle, Danielle still got a little Christian there. She, it's a word for me today. Oh, get, get 10. All right, we can read 10. Let's get it. She's trying to teach the Bible. That's what you trying to do. <laughs> she got a whole lesson plan right there. Trying to break it down. Let me tell you what this means, brother. This is uh, Malachi chapter 2, verse 10. Let's see what the book got to say. Have we not all one Father? Have we not all one Father? Has not one God created us? Mm -hmm. Why do we deal treacherously every man against his brother by profaning the covenant of our fathers? Uh huh. Judah has done tre dealt treacherously, and, and abomination is committed in Israel and in Jerusalem. Uh huh. For Judah has profaned the holiness of the Lord, which he loved. He profaned the holiness of the Lord, which he loved, and has married the daughter of a strange God. Mm -hmm. The Lord will cut off the man that does this, the master and the scholar, out of the tabernacles of Jacob. Hold on, he said he gonna do what now? He gonna cut off who? Man, cut off the man that does this, the master and the scholar, out of the tabernacles of Jacob. Oh, look at him, most high God. He said I, he gonna cut the man off. Where? From, he gonna cut him off from what? Uh, the master and the scholar out of the tabernacle of Jacob. The ruler. And the scholar, the ruler and the person that, I mean, the man who know that word. You know what I'm talking about? We is in our tabernacle. The tabernacle of Jacob is, is our house, right? That would be symbolized as what? Mm -hmm. What would the tabernacle of Jacob be symbolized in? Uh, Israel, I mean, Judah. But I mean, what would, like, what would be the symbol of that, though? The temple. Our temple, right? You know, our, you know our people. If we is up in that thing, in the temple, you didn't come around that temple unless you knew some word now. You know what I'm saying? I'm copying the word down. Just cr okay, I know me some word. You come to that temple, we're going to talk about some word. He said he's going to cut off the ruler and the scholar from it. So what does that leave after you cut them off? Nobody should teach. Nobody don't know nothing. What happened to our temple? I told you we were going to talk about this. Look at that. and we It go right to it, didn't it? That's why you picked it. Why well, shouldn't I let her pick it? Here I am. I'm thinking, oh God, moving today. It wasn't God. It was it was Danielle moving. <laughs> All right, let's get it. Let's go. Uh, where you want to go? Give me Daniel. It's Daniel picked Malachi. I didn't have nothing to do with it. I'm just throwing through. You probably spoken into existence before you got here. <laughs> I'm just praying on my way here. I'm just praying. This is this is Daniel. Uh, what I want? Daniel eight. Let's talk about it. Yeah, yeah, sorry. Tell them what you saw, Daniel. I don't think I want to hear um, that they were in Jerusalem building the temple and sacrificing on the altar. Well, they made dedication. Oh, yeah, that, but it was wood. Was that, that's why I didn't understand why it was. No, that stuff ain't nothing to understand. Before you get that, grab uh, what we want. Exodus 25, 26, maybe. Give me Exodus chapter 20. What's the last verse? Who got, who got, give it, somebody grab Exodus chapter 20. Tell me what the last verse is. So Moses went down to 
What's the number of it? 26, 20. 26, 25, 26. Oh, 20. Exodus chapter 20, verse 26, the last one? Mm -hmm. Okay. Give me Exodus chapter 20, give me verse 20. Exodus chapter 20, verse 20. Then we're going to jump over to Exodus chapter 25, I think. Um, and then and then we're going to go to, what did, what did I say before that? Daniel 8. Daniel, Daniel 8. Okay, so we're going to go to Exodus chapter 20, give me verse 20. Then we're going to go to Exodus chapter 25, verse something. And then Daniel 8, verse something. I don't know yet. And Moses said unto the people, fear not, for God has come to prove you, and that his fear may be before your faces, that you sin not. Uh huh. And the people stood afar off, and Moses drew near unto the thick darkness where God was. Uh huh. And the Lord said unto Moses, thus thou shalt say to the children of Israel. So the Most High God started giving Moses the commandments directly to Moses. And he said, well, Moses, this is what you're going to say. Remember, at first, the Most High God spoke directly to us. Right? You want to know what these folks, I watched that video. You want to know what them folks were saying in that video? Not in that video, but I watched, I watched, so this is what I did. So I watched the video. I was like, okay, let me go ahead and look into it. Let me see what we're going to talk about here. Right? So I watched the video. They didn't say a whole lot in that video. It was more of a Christian video. Right? It was a Christian trying to, it's the end of the world coming, guys. It's that another, right? So I'm like, okay, all right. So I went and I was like, I want to know what actually happened. I don't want to see it from the Christian's point of view. I want to see it like, you know what I'm saying? How, did, how would they present themselves? So it's, a, it's an organization that they got together called the Temple Institute. This is the organization that put the temple together and all that good stuff. So I listened to a uh, gentleman, I forget his name, but a gentleman who, um, uh, he is a Jew, you know what I'm saying, one of these Jewish folks. Um, not a Jew, but he is one of these Jewish folks. And he put together uh, a presentation. And part of his presentation, he said, the Most High God spoke, they call him Hashem. You know what I'm saying? That means his name in Hebrew. You know what I'm saying? So there's like, there's like the Most High God didn't just speak to Israel from the mountain when he gave the Ten Commandments. He spoke to the whole world in 70 different languages. I was like, well, you already lost me. You know what I'm saying? Wow. 70 different languages he spoke to the people. Oh, where, did, where in the world did they get that from? Because you know what? I could have swore. We ain't got to get it. I could have swore it was somewhere in our law that said, I don't know, maybe that no other people in the world. You only have. I mean, I could have swore, I could have swore the nations was supposed to look at us and be like, man, have we ever seen a nation so righteous? Yeah. I don't know. But these people come over there with, that's how you know they darn Gentile. They, if they natural instinct is to spread it out. Because they know it was only for us. They natural instinct to spread it out. You know what? 70 different languages. You know what that do for them? As soon as we bust their butt and show them, y'all ain't got no connection to the Israelites. Then they could be like, well, I mean, at least it was in 70 different languages. That's how we got tied in. Liars. Darn liars. So they already lost me with that. So, okay, I'm like, okay. So he spoke to you. I had to go back and read that thing. Like, is it any way they could have got that from it? Read 20, I was like, nah. They didn't get that from there. I don't know what they got it from. They didn't get it from there. Let's keep going, though. And the Lord said unto Moses, Thus you shall say to the children of Israel, Ye have seen that I have talked with you from heaven. Uh huh. Ye shall not make with me gods of silver, neither shall ye make unto you gods of gold. You can't make gods of silver or gold. Watch this. An altar of earth thou shalt make unto An altar of what? Earth. An altar of what? Earth. Okay, keep going. And shall sacrifice thereon thy burnt offerings and thy peace offerings, thy uh -huh. sheep. Thy and thine oxen, and in all places where I re record my name, will, I will come unto thee, uh -huh. and I will bless thee. Uh -huh. And if thou will make me an altar of stone, if thou will make me an altar of what? Stone. Uh huh. Thou shalt not build it of hewn stone. Uh huh. For if you lift up your tool upon it, thou hast polluted it. So now I looked at the shape of the altar. That thing was nice and symmetrical. That thing, I mean, that thing was like, I mean, it was like square box shape. I wonder how they got a stone. Cause they said it was made of stone, right? They said it was wood in there too, but it was made of stone. I said, I wonder how they got a stone naturally to just look like that. You know what they must have done? They must have put their tool on it. That got that. Oh, now you really lost me. But you know what, maybe, just maybe, I mean, you never know what these white folks, maybe they got a word from God. Maybe they was like, let me make it after, after the fashion that Moses made it. Let's hear how Moses made it. This is uh, Exodus chapter 25. 
It's too easy. You know what I'm saying? People, this, you know you ain't darn doing nothing. I'm gonna get the Christians next. Both sides wrong. That's a, it always get a, we always in a messed up position because we always stuck in the darn middle. Yeah, you know, we always just stuck in the darn middle. I'm talking to I'm talking to Christians and then talking to Hebrews. Hebrews trying to tell you, no, you gotta keep the law if you want to be saved, You know what I'm saying? Then the Christians, they gonna tell you, no, 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 if you try to keep the law, then you going to hell because you didn't trust Jesus. <laughs> I'm sitting here, man, both of y'all darn wrong. You know what I'm saying? Keep the law if you want to. Just do what the man said. You can keep the law, not keep the law. Do what the man said. You know what I'm saying? That thing is offensive to both sides. Now we just stuck in the middle. You know what I'm saying? Same thing with these people. The Jewish people, y'all some liars. You know what I'm saying? Y'all ain't building no darn altar. Now ain't all, and you got it in the wrong spot, quiet as it kept. You know what I'm saying? Y'all just playing around. You know what I'm saying? Y'all y'all got some information, got a little money, and just playing around. Send us the darn money. Why are you wasting money on the darn altar? Y'all know ain't nothing about the coming of that. Other than the darn mess. Y'all working to you're working your way to a darn mess. Go ahead, send me a little bit of money. I owe me anyway. This is uh this is Exodus chapter 25. What verse are we looking for? Help me out. Hmm. May not be 25, so it might be 26. I want the altar. The altar. Twenty six, I can get the altar. Twenty seven. Twenty seven. Twenty seven, I can get the altar. Yeah. Let's hear about the altar. I just want to see, cause I mean, maybe they designed it after, you know, what I'm saying, the fashion that Moses put it together. We gonna have to get Ezekiel too. You know, what I'm saying, cause I, I want to cover all bases, cause you never know. I mean, Moses put together a temple, a tabernacle, right? He had designs. Those same designs was used when our temple was put together by King Solomon. So if we read from Moses, we can get the same designs, right? Then after that. Ezekiel prophesied about the true third temple. They call this the third temple, even though it's just the altar. But they're trying to call this like the step towards the third temple, yeah, right? But that one, uh, they don't count that one that uh, as a rubble bull when they got back. No, they count that one. That's the second one. Okay, yeah, that's right. yeah, you know what I'm saying? That's the second one. So then, you know what I'm saying? Now the third one, the true third one, is prophesied by Ezekiel. It's in the book. So I want to cover. Did they do it off of the old design, or can we find something in Ezekiel? Ezekiel talk about an altar, you know what I'm saying? Talk about a brazen altar, you know what I'm saying? So we'll, we'll kind of figure it out. We'll see what we're dealing with. Let's see what we got here. And y'all shall make an altar What verse? 27. This is verse, this is chapter 20, this is Exodus chapter 27, verse 27? Verse 1. Verse 1? All right. And thou shalt make an altar of shittim wood, five cubits long and five cubits broad. Uh -huh. The altar shall be four square, and the height thereof shall be three cubits. Mm -hmm. And thou shalt make the horns of it upon the four corners thereof. Mm -hmm. His horns shall be of the same. And thou shalt overlay it with brass. And thou shalt you should overlay it with what? Brass. Now, Danielle, when you saw it, did you see it? You didn't, you didn't get it? Altar? Yeah. yeah. What is it? Did it look like it was overlaid with any brass? No, not whatsoever. Mm -hmm. I got that. We ain't got to keep reading here. They didn't go off of these designs. Even if, I mean, let's just say they did. See, let's say they used this design. They good? You use this design? Oh, your butt really in trouble now. Cause now you're using the holy design, your butt ain't, you ain't prepared to do it. You know what they try to tell us? They try to tell us that they sanctify priests. I wonder how that happened. One, y'all ain't the people. <laughs> let's just, I mean, y'all ain't the people. Let's just, let's just start there. They, they claim that they descended to Aaron too. I was like, man, these people just running their darn mouth, right? But they sanctify some priests. Okay, let's just say that y'all were descended to Aaron. So, who became unclean between the time that, or no, 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 let me say it differently. Who remained clean between the time that we got kicked out of the land and came back to the land and obviously some of us obviously turned white? Who stayed clean through that whole process that was able to sanctify somebody? <laughs> Can God make a, 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 the question is asked in the book. Can God make an unclean thing clean? Or it didn't say, it didn't say, can God do it? But it says, can you get an unclean thing or a clean thing from an unclean thing? Yeah, fresh water. That thing not happening. Fresh water out of, what, wood? If I bless this and this is clean, right? And then it touch a dirty floor. Does that make the floor clean or does it make this dirty? 
right? Let's use real life. You know what I'm saying? Usually, sometimes, you know what I'm saying, you get a little too spiritual and that thing don't touch it. You know what I'm saying? Let's use, use real life. I got two loads of laundry right in there, right? Right? Two loads of laundry. I do one load, you know what I'm saying? I forget to put it in the dryer. Tasha come in, she put it in the dryer for me. It get out, right? I go in, because Tasha put it in the dryer, she put it in the basket. I started off with two loads of laundry. I get in, and I'm like, oh, okay. Oh, these are both colors. So I dumped the dirty ones in with the clean ones that just came out, because I didn't know they just came out. Now, am I going to say those clothes are clean or dirty now? Dirty. All in things. Ain't nobody going to wear them darn drawers. Be like, man, it's mixed in with the dirty ones. We ain't got time. No, I just go ahead and run the whole thing. You know how the kid throw, throw the whole basket away. Or, you know what I'm talking about? Or is the, the dirty ones you threw in with the clean become clean because they sitting with the clean? Where that, where that happen at? Nah, I wish it did work like that. <laughs> I'd be rubbing my dirty drawers up against some clean ones. Put these things right back on. You know what I'm talking about? Right. I wish it did work like that. They ain't on that thing. Just as funky as they were when I left. <laughs> You know what I'm talking about? That's how I go. The most I got ain't crazy. He ain't looking at these people. He ain't about to let these white people. First of all, these people ain't even the people. They ain't gonna let you just pop on the scene and be like, okay, I'm a sanctify. How you gonna, who started off the clean? Who clean that's gonna make somebody else clean? Only God can do it. You gotta go through a process of being clean. You gotta go through the washer and dryer. If you dirty, you trying to pick something up to the washer and dryer. Now what you trying to put in there and take out is dirty. I'm going to take something out the washer and dryer and I got dirty hands. That's what we look like. Most of our guys looking at y'all like, y'all don't make no darn sense. And these people just running around, people buying it. Sending these people money. Send me some darn money. They send these people money to the Temple Institute. Yes, build it, build it. Even Christians doing this thing. Y'all, that's crazy. Y'all don't make no darn sense. Somebody tell y'all the truth, y'all sit there and laugh at it. Amen. Tell them they don't know what they don't know what they're talking about. Meanwhile, you let these people make a fool out of you. They not even the people when they're making a fool out of you. They kicking the real people out of the land right now. They won't let the Ethiopians uh, uh, immigrate into the land. Yeah, the, the Ethiopian claim that they the real Hebrews. And it might be true. Right? They call them Ethiopian because they live in Ethiopia. Right. You know what I'm saying? But it might be true. They actually may be Hebrew. I don't know. You know what I'm talking about? I don't know. I have to try to look into the history to see if they can trace it back. I don't know. But you know what I'm saying? It could be true. Bottom line, they not letting them through. They like, nah, we stopping all immigration. People are the wicked people. And they know what's coming. They know what's coming. They starting to prepare for that thing. They know what's coming. They trying to, they trying to, you know what I'm saying, kind of set stuff up for that argument because they know that thing is coming. It, we making too much noise and too many people finding out. Last thing they need is for all of us to come and come together and start believing the same doctrine. That's the last thing they need. They, they got some faith now because none of us believe the same thing. Everybody believes some wild stuff. All these people are silly. All right? Who is that? Let's go to uh, Ezekiel. Ezekiel chapter, what I want, 38? Is it? Chapter 8. Oh, you talking about uh, Ezekiel. Uh, you want, yeah, like 30, so late like 30, 40. early 40s. It might be 40. I guess. It's Ezekiel chapter 40 or something. You have to look at him, see? You got to look at these people for who they are, man. This stuff is dangerous. That's how, the, 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 the deception that's going to end up taking over the world. That's how it's going to work. You're going to be looking in the wrong area. Right? Everybody is looking at, the whole world is looking at Israel. All the Christians and everything, everybody's looking at Israel. They're looking at what's going on in Israel. Because they think the people in Israel are the Israelites. And they know that prophet, prophecy is surrounding the Israelites. Meanwhile, in America is where the Israelites are. In, in South America is where the Israelites are. In parts of Africa are where the Israelites are. And a lot of other places in the world. Right, but those are the main places where the Israelites are. And that's where we have to keep our eyes. And then you gotta keep your eye on, you know what I'm saying, a few other places. We'll talk about it real quick. Right? But that's where we have to keep our eye. These other people, these people, these people are smoke screens. They have us been in our neck like this looking, and the whole time everything happening right here, right? But under our nose. That's how the people gonna end up getting the mark of the beast. Cause they're gonna be looking at, oh, the Israelites are, you know, building the altar or the, the you know, our or the Israelites are doing this, or God is finally starting to redeem his people, that means the rapture is about to come. You silly people. 
right? So you start looking at that, getting fascinated with all that stuff going on, and then you start putting your trust in God is about to move right now. Then all of a sudden, something really going to move. Something going to really pop up and start doing miracles. Right in the place that you're looking. And then you're going to find out after it's darn too late that that thing doing miracles. Yeah, all right, before we get Ezekiel, this is Revelation. Give me Revelation chapter... Uh, What I want, 18, 17? Uh, I should have looked over this stuff before. Revelation, give me Revelation oh chapter God. 13. 13, yeah, that's what I want. You right. I want Revelation chapter 13, yeah, right after 12. 13 that's 11. Huh? 13 11. Give me Revelation chapter 13, verse 11. I appreciate it. It's Revelation chapter 13, verse 11. What's the book say? And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. Hold on. He had two horns like a what? Lamb. So hold on. The man that we worship, what they call him? The lamb. It's going to be something that's going to be in the area, and it's going to look like, you know what I mean? It's going to look like the thing. It's going to look like what we're supposed to be looking for. We already looking for people that look like our people. They don't really look like our people, but they presenting themselves as if they are people, right? So you're already looking at a fake people. Then you're looking for God to move because God's about to move. This is fulfilling prophecy right now. That's what all the Christians are saying. Prophecy is finally starting to be fulfilled. It's about to happen. The rapture is coming. Okay. So you're already looking for it. Then something pop out, start doing miracles. Hold on. So it's a, it's a dragon that came out and he had horn, two horns just like a lamb. He was a beast. Another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb. Okay. And he spake as a dragon. He spake as a dragon. Right? The way he looked, oh, he looked like the real deal. Right? But he speaks the way he is. I think people going to be able to identify speech. How you going to identify the word if you don't know it? Let me ask you. Do we feel like these pastors out here speak like dragons? I tell you they do. They speak like dragons. Right? But if we go up to a random person, you think these pastors speak like no. They'd be like, no, nah, no, my pastor, you know, that's a good pastor. They speak like dragons. What does a dragon speak like? Subtle. Oh, so we don't have to do some work tonight, man. Go ahead. Give me Revelation. We're gonna come back right there. Revelation chapter 12, give me verse 1. Then after we get Revelation chapter 12, verse 1, I think I want what? First Corinthians 8. Check 1 Corinthians 8 for me. Just tell me what the first verse says. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven. This is Revelation chapter 12. Give me verse 1. Watch this. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of 12 stars. Uh-huh. And she being with child cried, travailing in birth and pain to be delivered. Who was that? <clears throat> Israel. Okay. Keep going. How do we know it's Israel? Uh, because the, what's the, 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 the heaven, the stars, and the 12 crowns. Who was it, Joseph? Yeah, Joseph. Mm -hmm. so. Joseph had a dream in Genesis, right? He had a dream that, he said, he said, 11 stars, the moon, and the sun bowed down to him. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah, yeah. And his time. brothers looked at him and said, are you trying to say, his brother, no, his pops actually said, are you trying to say me and your mama going to bow down to you, boy? Who remember what happened to Joseph? Is, uh, we'll talk about it. We'll, we'll wrap up. All this stuff about to connect. We'll wrap around. I can, just, I can just see it all connecting right here. All that stuff about to connect. Watch this. Keep going. Watch this. I appreciate be, the most high God. Man, this thing's so perfect. Cry, travailing in birth, and pain to be delivered. Mm -hmm. There appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon. A great a red what? Dragon having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his head. Jump on down to verse 12. A great red what? Dragon. Okay, watch this. Therefore rejoice, ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of earth and of the sea. Uh -huh. The devil has come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knows that his he has but a short time. I miss it. Maybe it's verse 9. I'm and when more. the dragon saw that he was cast into the earth, he persecuted the woman which brought forth the man child. Mm. What do I want, verse 9? And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil, and Satan, which deceived the whole world. So the dragon is also called what? The devil. And what else? Satan. And Satan, what else? And the serpent, the whole serpent. And what did he do? And deceived the whole world. So if he deceived the whole world, what does it sound like when you talk like a dragon? Deceit. So the man looked like a, a, a lamb. 
I mean, he got horns like a lamb. Right? But that beast, when he opened up his mouth, boy, talk like a darn serpent. Dragon. Oh, my bad. <laughs> he talked like darn Satan. Dragon. Oh, my bad, my bad. Talk like the darn devil. Oh, my bad. <laughs> talk like a dragon. All the same. Notice. What I want? The Bible never calls Satan. First Corinthians Lucifer. chapter 8, verse 1. Yeah. Say it again. The Bible never calls Satan Lucifer. You ain't gonna find it. One You'll never one. find it. You let these people tell you, these people, these crazy white people, yeah, I'm a Lucifer worshiper. You make a <laughs> fool of yourself. <laughs> Just shut up. I never heard that. Yeah, you. I've heard it before. Now, you surely have heard that people worship Lucifer. I've heard it before. Surely you heard. That's what all this Illuminati stuff is. Ah. Yeah. Uh, They call them Luciferians or something like that, right? Yeah. Luciferian, Luciferian. Something like that. Yeah, these people sick. You know, they, they, they out there. Sickos. Making <laughs> a fool so out of themselves. The imagery themselves. with the dragon, though, like, we're really looking for a dragon? Well, listen, I ain't gonna tell you, really. Cause they always, always hesitate to answer the question. Because I've been around, my mouth be like, no, well, you're not looking for a literal dragon. <laughs> you're going to be looking. Really and then that thing pop out be a lip. The most I got to make a fool out of me just for running my darn mouth. You know what I'm saying? I, I ain't about to step out there and talk about it. I'm just going to say what it said. You know what I'm saying? That they say, look for a dragon. It it could have like features. It could have features. Because, you know, the, the most I got calls his son a lamb. And let's do, I mean, let's just do a little talk. We ain't even got to do it. We ain't even got to go along to our regular Bible study plan tonight. Today, we just going to do a little talking, right? 1 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 1. Mm -hmm. What is that? Now as touching things offered unto idols. No. 1 Corinthians chapter 8, uh, chapter 7, verse 1. Grab, um, we just going to do a little bit of talking. Grab Revelation 5 for me. Revelation chapter 5. I might be, it might be 4, though. Man, what did you, you say? Revelation chapter 4. It might be five, though. Uh, the lamb. Uh, I think it's five. Five? I'm going to say it's five. Two. It might be four, though. It's four? Five. Five? All right. This is Revelation chapter five. Give me verse one. And then, hold on, hold on. What's seven say? First uh, Corinthians chapter seven, verse one? Now concerning the things where he wrote unto me, it is good for, it's good for a it's No, not white. seven. So, Can't be seven. Yeah, that's what for? Give me 11. 11 is the... Begal, right? Oh, uh, that thing, I should know this one. 11 is the supper, I think. At first, at the, at the about end, though. No? At the end, I don't know. At first, he talked about the Lord's Supper. At the end, I don't know. I forget. He changed the subjects in 11, though, but I forget what. All right, well, let's do Revelation chapter 5, verse 1. You tell me what, what when you get it, tell me what verse 1 of uh, 1 Corinthians 11 says. What is that? Uh, be you be you followers of me, even as I also am of Christ. What's the next one? Yes, uh, I, know that I praise you, uh, I praise you, brother, that you remember all things. Getting and messed up in the supper. Yeah, yeah. Nah, not that. He talked about the supper later on, like a couple verses now. Uh, somebody getting drunk in, uh, you know what I'm saying? Do do a Google search. Man. We got to cheat real quick. Do a Google search for uh, beguiled Eve. And then grab, uh, grab Revelation chapter 5. Give me verse 1. Watch this. And I saw on the right hand of him that sat on the throne a book written within and on the backside sealed with seven seals. Okay. And I saw... So that's the Most High God, right? This is the imagery that is given. us. It's a Most High God sitting on the throne, a book sealed with seven seals, right? Watch this. And I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice... Before we get there, so let's talk about the book sealed. What imagery is that giving us? Book we talk about it all the time. Book sealed with seven seals. What imagery is that giving us? Somebody got to open this book. Somebody got to open the book. So that means if the book is closed, remember when we start off at uh, Isaiah chapter twenty nine and say the book is like it's one that's sealed, and you hand it to a man, and the man say what? I can't open it. I can't, open it. I can't read it. It's sealed. He said, or you hand it to an unlearned man. He said, I can't read. Right. So this is the imagery. People are not going to understand the book. Somebody's going to have to come and unseal the book and break it down. So what did Yahushua come to do? He opened the book, right? We had all this stuff. We were thinking all types of stuff was happening. Yahushua came down and corrected everybody thinking. Like, I'm the one. And then he taught it to the apostles. And then the apostles came and taught it to us through the word. And so the revelation, I mean, the, the, the mysteries of the book were revealed. 
So that was the book being unsealed, right? So this this is the imagery. It's giving us imagery of of things that already happened. So this I'm, I'm taking us here because I want to show you that there there's imagery that applies to things that already happened. So we know that this is not like a literal lamb or a literal book or anything like that. This is imagery that's showing us. So it could be that these these dragons are imagery, and that's what I would lean towards. However. Keep your eyes open for a real dragon too, because you just never know what the most high got. Right? Keep going. I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna, you ain't about to get me to commit to one or the other. You know what I'm saying? I just, I, I tell you what it is when I see it. You know what I'm saying? Tell you what it is when I see it. Let me see. And I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, who is worthy to open the book and to loose the seals thereof? Okay. And no man in heaven nor in earth, neither under the earth, was able to open the book, neither to look thereon. And I went. What happened? And I wept much because no man he did was worthy. I wept. I appreciate the most high God. Book said you're going to cry. We look at that. We see that. We see there's nobody to help us. The book, the man's seeing a vision right now, right? He's seeing a vision. He's looking like, okay, what's happening next? Okay, okay, I see the book. He know the book got the answers. But nobody can open it. Right? They call out who's going to open the book. Nobody was strong enough to do it. What else you gonna do? This my only hope, and it's gone. When your hope is gone, what happened? You cry. He said I wept. He, he said I wept a little bit. I, wept much. I mean, one tear came out. You cry. But that boy was boohooing. Didn't care who was around. Darn boohooing. Broke down because what else do I have at that point? No we gonna have to come back found, and touch that too. No man was found worthy to open and to read the book, neither to look thereon. Mm -hmm. and one of the elders said to me, "Weep not! Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has prevailed to open the book and to loose the seven seals thereof." He told him, "Stop crying. What you sitting there crying for? Everything gonna be all right. Get yourself together. That's what we have to be for one another." Right? Sometimes, I mean, sometimes we just break down. That thing has to happen. You can't control what's going to happen. When you feel like there's no hope, what you going to do? Break down. Your buddy's going to boo-hoo. There's no hope. Like, I'm not talking about like, okay, most of the hope gone, but I still see a glimmer. You might be able to hold that thing. You might be able to tuck that thing in, wait until you get to the room. Like, no, I see y'all later. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know that guy, you got to cry start coming out. You know what I'm saying? That thing coming in. Like, no, no, it's good. No, I got you, bro. No, we good, bro. No. No, I mean, no. <laughs> Everything start getting tight. You know what I'm talking about? That's like, then you gotta do it. You know, so you let that thing go. You go in the room, just lay down, just you know, boo hoo a little bit. Come out now, nah, I'm nah, good, everybody. You might be able to hold that one, but when there's no hope, and you, I mean, you expecting this right there, and there's no hope, and this is gone, then you gonna boo hoo in front of everybody. It's gonna take a man of God to come and be like, you know what? So, but everything gonna be all right. No, nah, man. The, the, the son of David. He gonna, yeah, come on. Let me show you something. Watch this. Watch the son of David. I appreciate God. And I beheld, and lo, in the midst of the throne, and of the four beasts, and in the midst of the elders stood a lamb as it had been slain, mm -hmm. having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent forth into all the earth. So now you see the imagery, right? This lamb is actually Yahushua, right? But he has seven horns and seven eyes. Right, and that represented the seven spirits that went throughout all the earth. Right, the seven spirits of the Most High God. Right, so we look at that and we can see that there is that imagery. That imagery does exist. You find it for me? Uh, for, yeah, we're in uh, Second Corinthians. Uh, Second Corinthians seven, eight. Uh, eleven. Oh, eleven. Well, it's Second Corinthians chapter eleven. Yeah, Watch yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Second Corinthians chapter eleven, verse uh, three. Second Corinthians. It's Second Corinthians chapter eleven. Give me verse one. Right? Because we look at it and we look at the imagery. The imagery that they gave us, they said, it's going to be a beast. Right? And we still got to go back and get that. It's going to be a beast. And the beast going to have two what? Horns like a what? He going to look like a, he going he gonna to resemble the lamb. We just saw the lamb. Lamb had how many horns? Who going to know that though? If, I, if you tell me lamb, how many horns does a real lamb have? But the Lamb of God, it tell you how many he had. Who gonna know? How do you know that unless you know the word? 
So when, when they point at Israel and they saying these white folks that are descendants of Aaron are setting up this altar, how am I supposed to know I'm looking in the wrong direction? I'm looking and it makes sense because I mean, I mean, it's Israel. Right? I mean, that is where the people of God come from. And I mean, they say that they there and everybody else say that's them. And they put together the altar. And the Christian, they got no chance. They looking at this like, this is it, guys. Yeah, they, you can hear them talking. I watched a couple videos. You can hear they They but excited, ain't they? All right, guys, this is it. They in their living room talking like this. All right, guys, this is it. Israel is finally coming. We're about to have it. The rapture is only moments away. Everybody, pack up your bags. What you packing a darn bag for? Let's say the most high God was going to take you. going to pack a bag? These people don't know no book. The whole, you read, you read Matthew 24, it tell you, it tell you, what it tell you? That's what they think. They think that's talking about the rapture. It's not, though. You know what I'm saying? But just because they think that's talking about the rapture, and if you thought that was talking about the rapture, I'd tell you you don't need to pack a darn bag. You packing a bag. What you going to take to God that you ain't there? He ain't already got for you. Man already told you, I prepared a place for you in heaven. He said, if it were not so, I wouldn't tell you. But I'm going with luggage. Yeah, everything these people do, bro, everything these people do show they don't trust the man. Man, tell me he got something. I'm coming in. I might not even wear no clothes. I'll be like, is it all right if I just come? All right, I just want to make sure. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you said you prepared to play. You know what I'm saying? I just want to make sure. You got a roll? All right, man, I'm just checking out. You know what I'm saying? I'm just trying to get up in there. Like, whatever it takes, what we right. need to do. Right. They don't trust the man. They, you know what I'm saying? You still trying to provide. You still trying to get it. Only thing, just do what the man say. That's all we got to do. We'll be all right. But we end up looking in the wrong place. That's the point, right? We end up looking in the wrong place. Something pop out in the wrong place. We already set ourselves up. Look, it's coming, guys. Something's going to happen. Just be on the lookout. And then something happens. And you know what? Look like a lamb. We got two horns. And it speaks like a dragon. Let's hear how a dragon speak. Mm. Would to God you bear with me in a little folly. This is 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 1. Would to God you bear with me in a little folly. What's folly? Uh, foolishness. Foolishness. When y'all hear these words, if that if that thing don't make sense, we can't afford to just be sitting here and be like, oh yeah, that sounds nice. No, nah, if you don't hear it, just stop you. What does that mean? Right? What does that mean? I don't get it. What does that thing mean? Let's get it. Let's make sure we get an understanding and stuff. These people, these people out here trying to play with our hearts. They trying to play with our darn minds. They trying to play with the whole world right now. They don't know what they plan with the deep end. He's oh man, we could be all over this book tonight. We ain't gotta get it. But in Deuteronomy, he said, I am going to, I am going to, um, I'm going to bring you to jealousy with a foolish nation. Mm. So you have to understand, these people don't know what they're doing. These people, in their mind, they probably fully convinced, right? They probably fully convinced, you know what? We are Israel. They have no idea. They're a foolish nation, the book called. He's going to bring us to jealousy with a foolish nation. So we look at them, and what with our main thing, we look over there like, man, we just want our land. You hear me talking right now, I sound jealous. Send me the money, not them. Because he bringing us to jealousy with a foolish name. These people don't know what they aren't doing. They plan with stuff that they have no idea. There's a lot of people going to get caught up in this stuff and they're going to be looking the wrong direction and take a, the mark of the beast, whatever that end up being. I ain't saying it's one of those little chip pieces or whatever. Who knows? I don't think about that thing. That thing, you know, uh, what they call it? What they call it? The... Uh, the new, the new thing that these people are doing. No, not the chip. The, the new thing, the, the money. Yeah. I was thinking about that thing. I was like, hmm. You know what I mean? I was like, that could be it. I don't think it's that right now, but I'm just saying that could develop to being the instrument to which you can say you can't buy or sell unless you operate in this system. It could easily become it. Easily. You know what I'm saying? So I was thinking about that thing like, okay. You know what I mean? So you don't really know, you know what I'm saying? We don't know. We just that's the position we gotta be in. We just in a position like, okay, God said this would happen. So when it happens, you know what I'm saying? It ain't really about us trying to predict what's gonna happen. It's like when it happens, we just gotta be able to recognize it. Okay, it happened, that's it. That fits the description. Okay, we moving this way then. Right? Same thing with this, you know what I'm saying? We gotta be able to see that's not it, and that is it. Keep going, what we got? For I am jealous over you with godly jealousy. Okay. For I have espoused you to one husband, uh -huh. that I may present you as a chaste virgin to the Messiah, 
Mm -hmm. But I fear lest by any means as a ser as the serpent beguiled Eve. As the serpent did what? Beguiled Eve through his subtility. Through his what? Subtility. So when when this beast is talking like a dragon, oh, I think it's subtle. It ain't like I mean we we picture a dragon which you think fire breathing dragon, rawr, growling yeah, and all that crazy stuff. Nah. See if you don't know the word, that's what you thinking. Somebody tell you that, be like, yeah, nah, man, that's, nah, the, the beast, nah, that thing, you know what I'm saying, that thing just gonna speak like a dragon, you'll know it. That's what you would think, right? You don't know no word. You look into the word, it's like, oh, no, that's not it at all. The dragon is also the serpent, and also the devil, and also Satan. Oh, the serpent beguiled Eve. How did the serpent beguile Eve? By walking up to her and be like, yeah, eat that apple right there. <laughs> no, he's like, so listen. Look, we can get it. This Genesis chapter three. We can get. It. I just want. I I love this thing. This Genesis chapter three. Watch this. Let's see how slick the man is. A lot of people don't respect the devil. A lot of people don't respect. I respect. I respect the man. I'll be looking at. I'll be like, All right, I see you. You know what I'm saying? I'll be like, yeah, I see you. You know what I'm saying? Ain't that what the book say? Book say. He said. Uh, what does it say? We, uh, what I'm thinking of? That thing say, uh, uh, we know his devices. Right? Do be not ignorant to his devices. Yeah, be not ignorant to his devices. We can't afford to just be like, Man, I don't know what the devil be doing out here in these streets. <laughs> that thing, you gotta respect it. You got to. You gotta be able to look at it and be like, okay, all right, I see how you operate. You know what I'm saying? Because now I can prepare for that. I don't know how you operate, you know what I'm saying? For the longest, people had me believing, oh, the devil lied to Eve and this, that, and the other. And technically, right? But I didn't understand it. I didn't get it. Let's read it. Watch this. It's Genesis chapter 3, what verse? We ain't got to start at verse 1. What, I want 6? Mm. Or do I need to start at verse 1? You can't, yeah. All right, this is Genesis chapter 3. Give me verse 1. Let's do it. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God has made. Mm -hmm. And he said unto the woman, Yea, has God said you shall not eat of every tree of the garden? So look how he came at it. Most of God very clearly said what? Uh, all the trees are good for food except the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. He said that one that's in the midst of the garden, you in the middle of the garden, that one, you should not eat. Then he told her, don't even touch it. That's what she gonna say, right? She might have added that on. You know what I'm saying? Who knows? You know what I'm saying? Adam might have added it on to her. Because remember, he spoke, most like God spoke to Adam. Adam would have had a related message to her. So Adam might have been like, look, don't even touch that thing. Yeah, he the man. It's my house. Right? He the man. He's like, no, don't even touch it. You know, you know, how, you know how like you get told something? Like, like when my boss tell me something, okay, we need this done by this time. Right? So he give me a deadline, let's say, let's say January 20th. I'm going to go back to my team and I'm going to tell them when, when do I need it done. Like <laughs> ASAP. I need that thing done by January 14th, right? Because now, now I give myself time to make sure, okay, make sure y'all did it right. So you always put a tighter constraint. So you know what I'm saying? You look at, he just told him, don't you eat of that, that fruit. Adam come back with, look, don't, don't you even darn touch it. You know what I'm saying? Don't, don't you even touch it. Watch, watch how she handle it. And the woman said unto the serpent, we may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. Uh-huh. But unto the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, ye shall not eat of it, uh -huh. neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. So now, just, I mean, you look at it, and you don't really think nothing of it. But think about the tact that he used, right? Satan came in there, he was like, the serpent was like, God said you can't eat of any tree in the garden. Now, he know he didn't say that. But he wanted to put her mind in a position just to start off with, God is being unfair. That's what politicians talk. Yeah! Like, I already know he didn't say you can't, but I'm going to... Man, he told you you can't eat any tree in the garden? Now put you in a position to be like, let me see if you know what he really said. You know what, uh, on Facebook, that dude, he was like, uh, white lives don't matter. He's like, are you saying you're gonna, he was like, I didn't say that. Yeah, that's how the people do it. That's how they ain't work. <laughs> he was like, I ain't say that. That's yeah, how they ain't work. That's how it is. The politicians, the people on the news talk like that. That's how they work, bro. All of them talk like dragons, bro. All of them talk like dragons. So we look at it, and the man, he set him up like, okay, any tree? No. Okay, so now she know her word, right? She she came back, she quoted it, he added a little bit on there, you know what I'm saying? Probably from Adam. Okay, good. She know her word. Let's see what he do next. 
And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but the free the tree wait, sorry, but the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, uh -huh. God has said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. Okay. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. For God knows that in the day you eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Oh, so now, all of a sudden, now he's an expert on this tree. He said, you're not going to die. Right? This, let me tell you what God knows. He knows that if you eat it, you're going to be wise. Right? You're going to get the knowledge of good and evil. And then you'll be like who? And you'll be like him. And your eyes shall be opened. For God does know that in that day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be open, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. So he said, you know what? God just don't want you to be a god like him. Right? That's, that's the message. He's not saying that. But guess what's in her mind at that point? First he started her off, just set her mind up. God is unfair. He's not going to let you eat anything in the garden? No, silly. I can eat any tree I want, just not in the midst of the garden. I'm not even supposed to touch that one. Oh, no, that's not. To, he just know that if you eat that, right, you'll mess around and be like him. You'll know good and evil, right? And then you'll like mess around and be like him. So now God is unfair, right? The first thought that she had, you just imagine. You know, first thought, God is unfair. He won't let you eat anything in the garden. Oh wait, no, no, that's not true. Let me correct that. Oh, he's trying to hide something from me from being like him. Okay, how did Eve respond to that? And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes and the tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof and did eat mm -hmm. and gave also unto her husband with her and he did eat. Oh, and I wonder what happened. Let's see, let's see how much Satan lied about. And the eyes of them both were open and they knew That's, that they were naked. So ain't that what Satan said? He said, your eyes will be open, huh? Yeah. Soon they ate it, what happened? Yeah, bro. Okay, hold on. Let's see. They knew they was naked. And they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. Okay. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. Okay. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. Jump on down. What verse I want? 17 maybe? You know what I'm looking for? Yeah. 20? No. 22. 22? Okay, I knew it was somewhere over there. And the Lord God said, Behold, the man has become as one of us. The man has done what? Become as one of us. So did Satan lie about that? I Say, I mean, Satan told him some very clear things. Listen, it ain't that you're going to die. God just knows that in the day that you eat it, you're going to know good from evil. Your eyes going to be open. You know what? You're going to become just like him. So we know their eyes got open, right? We confirmed that one. Most High God just said what? Behold, the man has become as one of us. So now we know that the man has become just like God. Let's see what else. To know good and evil. And now they know good and evil. Those are three things he said. What the man lie about? This is what we're dealing with. Death. That's it. But hold on. Let's think about it. Grab Genesis chapter 5 for me. I respect it. You got, I mean, you look at Satan and the way he be... I respect what he's doing. I got to look at that thing and be like, goodness gracious, you pulled a number there. I couldn't even figure that thing out. Right? This Genesis chapter 5, give me verse 1. And after this, we still got to get make our way all the way back to Revelation 13. This is the book of the generations of Adam. What's the generations of Adam? What that mean? It's, um... that's, his, that's his descendants, right? Watch this. In the day that God created man in the likeness of God made he him. Mm -hmm. Male and female created he them. Mm -hmm. He blessed them and called their name Adam in the day when they were created. Mm -hmm. And Adam lived 130 years and begot a son in his own likeness after his image and called his name Seth. Mm -hmm. In the days of Adam after he begotten Seth were 800 years and he begot sons and daughters. He, he lived how long? 800 years. So now we got to ask ourselves what did Satan lie about? 930 years. Most high God said, the day you eat it, you're going to die. Seems like that didn't happen. Right? So Satan said, in the day you eat it, your eyes going to open. That happened. Seems like that happened at least. Um, he also said that you're going to become like God. God confirmed that happened. And then God also confirmed that they're going to have knowledge of good and evil. 
I mean, if you just look at it, Satan is the honest one. God is the liar. That's what it looks like. If you just look at it, they didn't die, and everything that Satan said was going to happen, happened, and God confirmed it. This is what we're dealing with. We're not dealing with no flat out, this is an easy lie. Oh, obviously that's a lie. We're dealing with technicality lies. The lie, the only lie he told is that in the day, that day they did die. Go back to Genesis chapter uh, 3. <clears throat> Genesis chapter 3, I think we left off verse 23. Yeah. Genesis chapter 3, verse 23. Right? Most High God said very clearly, oh, your butt gonna die. In the day you eat of that thing, you gonna die. Sure, he lived to be 900 years old. For sure. He died that day though. Watch this. Therefore, the Lord God sent him forth from the Garden of Eden to till the ground from where he was taken. Uh -huh. So he drove out the man and he placed at the east of the Garden of Eden cherubims and a flaming sword which turned every way to keep the way of the tree of life. So he just got cut off from what? Life. He got a flaming sword that keeps the way of what? The tree of life. You have no access to life. You just got cut off by a sword from life. Or oh, your butt is dead. You think you alive. In your mind, you alive. Because Satan told you, you know what? You're going to be all right. You won't surely die. And you believe that. So now, in your mind, you believe in that you're alive. Book already told us. We all just walking dead. Right? That's the lie. You could have an argument about that lie. Right? And each side could have a point. Well, no, he lived to hear. Hey, no, but he got cut off from life spiritually. And that can just go back, but no, God wasn't talking about spiritually. He was talking about physically. No, he was talking about spiritually. You can just go back and forth with that all day. And that's why when we talk about the Bible, you have arguments that constantly happen. Because Satan's lies are not going to be flat out. It's, not, it's never just going to be like, oh, that's easy to get. That's easy, money. If somebody lie like that, that, that thing ain't come from Satan. They, they just got to come up. Satan got them good lies. You know what I'm saying? Satan got them good lies. You know what I'm talking about? You know what I'm saying? When you know what I'm saying, Satan got the thing like, I mean, you ain't gonna find that thing out 30 years later. Like, goodness gracious, I was dealing with her butt. Or goodness gracious, I was dealing with his butt. Goodness gracious, I let my job trick me into doing this, that, and the other. Right? You find out that thing. Them is the Satan line. Alright. Revelation chapter 13, where we leave off. 12. It's Revelation chapter 13, verse 12. He had, he had horns like a lamb, so he looked like the real deal. But when he spoke, he spoke like the serpent spoke. And that boy is slick. That serpent boy, that boy got skilled when it comes to line. Books say he the father of it. And he exercises all the power of the first beast before him mm -hmm. and causes the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. Mm. And he does great wonders so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. So he's doing miracles too. Even fire comes down from earth in the sight of men. Right? A lot of people, a lot of, people, a lot of Christians, they look at this stuff and they say, yeah, so this is going to be a new military weapon. That's just another, maybe. Right? Maybe it will be some military weapon. But when I see wonders in the book, guess what I think? Miracles. It's going to be some real stuff. So we're going to be looking at Israel. Right? And we're going to see these white folks. And they're going to be putting together some whatever they think they're putting it together. And we're going to be like, this is the fulfillment of prophecy. Christians going to be going crazy all around the world. we all going to be looking at it. And then all of a sudden, there's going to be somebody that pop up that make you worship somebody else that came before him. Right? So, and he had a, it said he had a what heal? A who? What kind of wound? A deadly wound. You know what that means? He died. So it's going to be some type of beast that died and came back. Because his deadly wound was healed. And the only person I can think of that would fit that description is probably Yahushua. So now we're going to be thinking that we see something that resembles Yahushua. Also, something else that we got to worship that came back like Yahushua. Everybody's going to be looking at the same spot in the world. That's where everything will go down. Meanwhile, the true people of God is going to be getting exiled, brought back into a different place, and everybody's eyes going to be over here. The real prophecy is, you know what I'm saying, going to be happening to us. Everybody else going to be looking way over there, worshiping something that they ain't got no business. 
So then when we come back to the land, right? Who remembers what's happening when we come back to the land? The whole world does what? Start to come to the land. All the nations come back. So when we get back to the land, all the nations fight against us. Why? Because the whole world been looking at this direction. They looking at these people. They looking at the miracles going over here. Who are you Negro coming in here? Y'all better get y'all black butts out of Get they butts out of here. Somebody get they still talking this Hebrew stuff. We already debunked y'all junk. It's gonna be some white folks that roll with us, so that's how we gonna get over there. A lot of these not just white folks, it's gonna be a lot of these Gentiles gonna help us get over. That's how we're gonna get over there. It's gonna cause a war to all the nations, and they all gonna come and try to fight against us. You look at that thing, I mean you he laid out for you, you can just see it. I mean you just like, okay, I see how this thing happening. I see how it's gonna play out to some degree at least. Right? Cause it's all misdirection. That's how Satan works. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna let you focus on what you want to focus on. I'm a. You mean every tree? You can't eat any of them? No, cause if I single it out, you focus. No, no, no. Let me take your focus away. You can't do nothing. Dang. That ain't that what people do? Right? And your mama don't let you do nothing. Like, what you mean? My mama let me out. She just said I can't come outside today. Right? Ain't that how they hit you? That, how that thing make you feel, Nate, when your mama don't let you do nothing? Dang, she don't let me do nothing. You right. <laughs> now you mad at your mama for no reason. Everything your mama darn do for you, you mad at her for no reason because you can't go outside. Your mama never let you do nothing. She never let me do nothing? When the last time we corrected our friends, like, no, nah, you know what I'm saying? Well, my mama let me do this, that. We ain't never did that thing. We ain't never stood up for our mama. <laughs> we just left our mama out there to dry, out of line. <laughs> Man, she ain't, I know, man, she ain't never let me do nothing. <laughs> Telling them darn lie. But that's how they get us. That's how they get us. Right? Even when we, you know what I'm saying, trying to, you know, low-key manipulate each other into doing stuff. You know what I'm saying? We out here, you know what I'm saying, in the street doing stuff. Man, you know what I'm saying, you ain't trying to ride. Oh, no, nah, I mean, you scared. You know what I'm saying? Now, you never want to ride. I rode a few times. You know what I'm saying? What you I just don't want to go this time, bro. I'm scared. You know what I'm saying? This thing don't look like a good idea to me. You know what I'm saying? That's how it is. That's how that deception, as they, what they call it, peer pressure. That's how that thing works. You hit them with that absolute. You know what I'm saying? How you supposed to come back to it? Right? You got to be focused. You know what I'm saying? These people, who, who, who stand a chance you don't know the word? You don't stand a chance. You, just, you do not stand a chance if you don't know the word. Anything can get you. That's why I put the number out there. I tell these people, man, you don't stand to Listen, not everybody is going to be an expert in the word. That's just a fact. The most high God, he set it up that way. He set it up that you're going to have sheep that are really, you know, that you're going to have shepherds that are really sheep themselves, right? And you're going to have other sheep following that sheep. And we all trying to get to the most high. Right? That's the setup that he had. So now for the, for the majority of the sheep, anything can lead them astray. But if you've got a shepherd in front of them, then they can go to that shepherd and be like, okay, listen. All right, this is, you know what I'm saying, this is what, you know what I'm saying, this is what I'm dealing with. I, I kind of feel like I need to do that. And that's why it's our job. That's why it's our job to be like, okay, listen, okay, I understand. Let me help you out. This is what the book said. But the problem is, what is Satan going to do at that time? Keep reading. Uh, no, I'm sorry, not keep reading there. Go back to um, uh, uh, 2 Corinthians 11. 2 Corinthians 11, wherever we left off, pick up from right there. <coughs> this is 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 3. Verse three. Watch this. Whole book gonna tell you, you know what I'm saying? The whole thing gotta line up. You ain't got no reason. But I fear lest by any means as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtility, mm -hmm. so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in the Messiah. Mm-hmm. When they say simplicity, it's not talking about, it's not talking about, uh... Simple. Yeah, it ain't talking about like, oh, yeah, two plus two simplicity. It's talking about single, it's, it's, it's one way, you know what I'm saying? It's like it's straight. That's what the, the real word behind that. It's talking about it's just like straightforward, like it's straight. Not saying that it's easy to get, because we know the book is not easy to get necessarily. But the way it is, that thing is straight. You got to line up to get it. It's one way. You know what I'm saying? You ain't got to, okay, you got to take this way to make this left turn. No, 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 no. Yo, but this is the path you on, and it might be some struggles to stay on that path, 
But let me tell you, you never gonna forget that this is the path you want. You gonna make a choice to be off of that path, yes or no. Right? Keep going, watch this. He said, he gotta take away the simplicity. For if he that comes preaches another Yahushua. So, if he comes preaching another Yahushua, what's gonna happen? Whom we have not preached. Uh huh. Or if you receive another spirit which ye have not received. Or you get another spirit. Okay. Or another gospel which ye have not accepted, ye might well bear with him. He's already letting you know what the plan is. He's going to send people to say stuff that's similar to what you're talking about. And you're going to mess around and put up with it. So that's what we deal with. Yeah, you got all these sheep. And then you got a shepherd in front of them. Leading them to the most high God. But what is Satan going to do? He's not going to leave it at that. He'll be like, okay, I see how that works. I need something that looks just like that. Let me send my sheep. That's really a wolf. And she clothing. But he looked like a sheep. Right? Just like the dragon in lamb's clothing. He looks like a lamb. Right? But now I'm going to put them next to him. And so now I'm walking side by side with this real shepherd. And I look like the real shepherd. And then some of these sheep going to come my way. And if we get enough of those shepherds in there that's, that look like the real shepherd. And we outnumber the real shepherds. Now it makes it real hard for these sheep to know who to follow. And that's where we at. He just clouded and muddied the water so much. That now we in a position where people, people just give up on the whole idea. You know what? See, I just, I believe God is just a spirit and I'm just spiritual. I'm not religious. That's AKA, I'm going to do what I feel like doing right now because I can't figure this thing out. And I get it. I get it. Listen, I get it. That thing makes sense. You can't figure it out. Just like, listen, I mean, you know, I give up, right? Just give me something. Okay, I know it's a God. I'll leave it at that. Right? You know what I'm saying? Just give me common, common denominator. What, what we rolling with? I ain't got time to be trying to figure this stuff out. Going back and forth with all these people. That ain't don't make no sense. Watch that. Keep going. Jump on down for me. You know what I'm looking for? I want to say like verse 12 maybe. 11. 10 maybe. Uh, 13. 13. This is verse 13. What does the book say? For such are false apostles. False apostles. Deceitful workers. Deceitful workers. Transforming themselves into the apostles of the Messiah. They make themselves look like an apostle of the Messiah. And no marvel. For Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. What they call, what they say Lucifer is? Life. The devil. They say he the devil, right? And they say he is the most beautiful what? Angel. All lies. All lies. Why? Okay, let's just, I mean, let's just, let's, let's ask ourselves, right? If Lucifer, right? If Lucifer started off as God's most precious angel, and then you know what? He said, I want to be like God. So God kicked him out of heaven. And then he became a serpent or Satan or whatever, right? Why would this say that he transformed himself into an angel of light if that's actually what he always was? These people lie. But the lie makes sense when you don't know the book. Right? You know the book is like, oh, that's not adding up. You don't know the book. I believe that lie because his lie is not simple. All right, he's not gonna hit you with no no flat. This this beast that we're dealing with, all the stuff that we're gonna be dealing with, is gonna be extremely subtle. Okay. And it's gonna be dealing with stuff that looks just like the real thing. And the only way you're gonna know is gonna be details. It's gonna be seven horns versus two horns. But naturally, you're gonna think two horns, because I mean all lambs have two horns. So naturally you would think the two horns. Mm, books say seven. Naturally, you think when the when most high God say die, you know what I'm saying? My heart stopped beating. No. Books say he cut you off from the tree of life. Right? That's why the whole book is trying to teach us to come out of our what mind? Our carnal mind, our natural mind. Come out of your flesh. Because we can't look at things naturally. You know how people say, well, you know, we all human. <clears throat> yeah, we are. So that makes sense then, so... I'm just thinking though, so that way, if when he was saying, we thinking like dying, but when, when God said, well, he's talking about dying, like, we only sleep. That's right. Right? That's right. So that's why, that's what looks for, but it's like, now, you, you're not going to have that. You know, that death is that, when they say death, they talk yeah. about that. Oh, no, death. you're done. Yeah. yeah, that's that, you ain't coming back. Because yeah. even the, the righteous and the wicked getting resurrected, mm -hmm. so that's just sleep. Yeah, that right, death is exactly. when he put you somewhere forever. Yeah, you ain't gonna have no access to the tree of life. That's the only way. That's where our hope gotta be. 
our hope gotta be to get access to the tree. If we, we ain't gotta get it, but if we went to the end of Revelation, oh, we gotta get it. Find the tree of life for me in Revelation. I wanna say it's 22. I wanna say 22, maybe verse 19. You notice that the book starts with the tree of life and with man being cut off from the tree of life at the very end of the book, last verse, last chapter, not verse. 22? No, you're right. 22, I think it's uh, verse, uh, verse 2, right? Verse 2? No, it's probably lower down than that. This Revelation chapter 22. What verse? Uh, it ain't 19 or 17 or nothing? Mm. No, I should say tree of life. Yeah. Might be 21 then. He set the he set the tree in the uh, in the kingdom. No, I'm trying to find. It might be twenty one that I'm looking for. Right, let's see. Oh no no yeah two three of life. This verse two? Mm -hmm. Oh. It ain't it don't come down later than that. Mm -hmm. well, you probably thinking the water is alive. Like she was saying. So you sure? Yeah. Side of the river. Man, what's the last verse? Uh, amen. No, nah, what no, nah, what 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 number is it? Twenty one. Give me give me verse give me verse eighteen. Give me verse seventeen. Well the tree is in the beginning of the chapter. Seventeen, 17 say. say. Uh, spirit and the bride say come and let him hear say come. Let him that hear say come and let him that is a thirst shall come and whosoever will let him take water of life freely. That's what we Going crazy right now? No, so look, let me start at one. And he showed me a pure river of, of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb. In the midst of the street of it and of either side of the river was there a tree of life, which bare twelve men of fruits and yielded her fruit every month. Mm, and the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nation. Right? This stuff is deep, man. It's a, I mean, I can go all day with this stuff. Because why would the nation need to be healed? What happened to the water? Watch it. Keep going. What happened to the water that flowed from the tree? It was light. Keep reading. Light. And there shall be no more curse, but the throne of God and of the Lamb shall be in it. Notice it says, there should be no more curse. Keep going. And his servants shall serve him. Uh -huh. And they shall see his face, and his name shall be in their foreheads. Uh -huh. And there shall be no light there, and they need no candle, neither light of the sun. Uh -huh. For the Lord God gives them light, and they shall reign forever and ever. Mm -hmm. And he said unto me, These sayings are faithful and true. And the Lord God of the holy prophets sent the angel to show unto his servants the things which must shortly be done. Mm -hmm. Behold, I come quickly. Blessed is he that keeps the sayings of the prophecy of this book. Mm -hmm. And I, John, saw these things and heard them, and I had heard and seen. I fell down to worship before the feet of the angel which showed me these things. And he said unto me, See thou do it not, for I am thy fellow servant and thy brethren, the prophets, and of them which keep the sayings of the book. Mm -hmm. Worship God. He said, he said Worship God. Me, Seal not the sayings of the prophecy of this book, for thine is at hand, yet for the time is at hand. He that is unjust, let him be unjust still. He that is filthy, let him be filthy still. He that is righteous, let him be righteous still. And he that is holy, let him be holy still. And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me to give every man according to his work shall be. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Blessed are they that do his commandments. Blessed are they that do what? Do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life. and may That they might have the right day. to what? Tree of life. That's what I was looking for. Word. Right? Could we look at it? He said at the very beginning, you didn't do what I told you to do. Right? So guess what I, what's going to happen? I cut you off from the tree. You get to the very end, blessed are those that do his commandments. Because then guess what you get rights back to? Tree of life. The thing comes full circle. Right? Think about that same man. He, he, the, the angel was showing him this. And what did he do? He wanted to bow down, not the angel, but his fellow servant was, uh, was showing him that. And what did he want to do to him? He wanted to bow down and worship him. That was that same man, when nobody can open the book, what did he do? You see the difference when the hope is removed from us? Right? When we don't have any other hope? 
world is wrong with you. Right? When you when that hope is removed from you and you don't have any hope, you're going to break down. Grab, okay, let's talk about it. Look, grab, grab Genesis chapter, uh, we're going to get up out of here. So that's when. Grab Genesis chapter uh, 50. Adam, right? Huh? Adam had to die. Adam represents the flesh. Adam represents the death. Genesis 45, sorry. The Messiah represents the life. The Messiah represents the Son of God that was to be, to bring his people back to life. Mm -hmm. So, first Adam, God's son, flesh. The last Adam, spirit, the life. Quicken the spirit, the book called it. I mean, the spirit that brings life. All right? So the first son was Adam. I missed it. What? Well, the first son was Adam, flesh. And the last son was life, a quickening spirit. Yeah, no, right? So Adam, the first son, he got cut off from life. And God was like, you know what? This one, he's going to bring us back to life. Because Adam didn't just get everybody cut off, just himself cut off from life. There's everybody after him. That's right. There was a question. Hmm? Um, it's Genesis chapter 45 Give me verse 1 Try to shoot through this real quick What question, Daniel? Uh, what he's saying is um, Yahushua and God And then it went into the Trinity Which, you know, we got Yeah, Yahushua is a is a is a like a physical representation of the Most High God. So yes, they are the same, right? So Yahushua, Yahushua. So God is a spirit, right? So when, okay, let's start all the way at the beginning, right? So let's start all the way back to Adam. When the Most High God needs to get something done, He puts a man in the place, right? So what He did is He created the whole world, and then first thing He well not first thing, but after He created everything, on day six He said, okay, let me go ahead and put a man in there. He said, I'm gonna keep the, I'm gonna put a man there to keep the ground, right? Name all the animals, all types of stuff, right? So he puts a man in place. At the beginning of the book, you see his action, his character. I put a man in place to do my dirty work, right? So he puts a man in place there. Once the man is in place, man gets cut off, all this other stuff. So then he sends other boy, men to go and teach the word or to gather the people. So after that, you get Noah, right? After that, you get Abraham. After that, you get uh, Isaac and, and uh, Jacob, right? That thing comes to Moses, right? Then after Moses, you get uh, uh, David, right? Solomon, right? Then that thing get on the get on all the way down the line. Then you end up getting the Yahushua, right? So all this time he had been putting men in place. That's how he operates. So when it came to saving everybody, the only way he could do it is say, you know what? None of I mean, I went through all these people. None of them get it done. I gotta make a man after me. I tried it with Adam. Let me do it a different way this time, right? I mean, I gave Adam some of my spirit and let him live. Let me put me in a man. Closest thing we got was like Moses and David, and they still like they still didn't. You know what I mean? Wasn't they quite there? So he put himself in a man, right? So he his spirit made uh, uh, Mary pregnant. It was no man's involvement. No man had to do it. It was just his spirit. So then. The offspring from that becomes him. It's 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 him because if you I like to think of it like infinity, right? If you take infinity and you try to cut infinity in half, now you have two what? Infinity. Two infinity. You can't cut. In, you get what's the number? What's 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 infinity divided by two? I don't know. Right. It's like you. It keeps going. There's no. It can't. So if you if you take a little piece of infinity and then you know what I'm saying let that thing come out, that thing gonna come out infinity. So that's what the Most High God did. He took. His spirit put it and made a child out of it. Not just not just created something from the dirt and gave it life. It's different. Right. I took my spirit, my essence, and then I put it inside of a woman and made her have a child. So from there, the offspring is him. Right? And so that's why you see things, a lot of people struggle because you see Yahushua saying stuff like, oh, it is not for me to know the time, but only for the father. So it's like, it can't be the same because of that. Well, no, they are the same. It's just that he is operating as a man, right? So he's separating himself. The book even says he didn't count it to be robbery to be equal with God. So in other words, 
He's saying, I'm humbling myself, right, to hold God to a higher esteem. Why would I do that? Why as a man would I want to hold God to a higher esteem, even though I am God? It's the process. It's the process. Yeah, the, because now, if I'm telling everybody, be like me. Yeah, they obey the law. But then I'm, I'm, when, when I say be like me, I'm walking around here, well, I'm God. What are everybody else going to do? I'm God. Right? So he has to be careful. He tells you, ye are gods, but at the same time, that's the Father. Like right? That's the Father. So he always puts himself in subjection to the Father. Not for his sake, but for our sake. Then after all the, everything is done, he's made subject to the Father, and then all will be in all just like before. In other words, he returns to the glory, just like he, his prayer in uh, John 17, I, said, I think, he said, my prayer, his prayer was, return me to the glory that we once had before the world was. In the beginning was the word. The word was God. The word was with God. So that's what all that is saying. The word, the essence that created everything, is God. God created everything. But at the same time, he separated it. That part that was separated is the part that became Yahushua. Right? Which is the same as the part that created everything in the world. Which is the same as God. Right, but we make the distinction because we have we know that in the future that that essence becomes man, but in actuality it's all one essence, it's all the same thing, and so that's why that's where people get the Trinity from because it's like okay, well you got God the Father, the Holy Spirit. Well, no, God is Spirit, so Holy Spirit, Spirit, God, Father, all that same thing. Right, the only thing that makes a difference is the physical, right, the one that you can actually see, which is Yahushua. And that's why they that's why we are not supposed to have idols or anything. Because Yahushua is the physical rep. An idol was made to, to be a, a physical representation of something you can't see, right? I worship a god, you know, what's a god? Give me a god. Zeus, right? So I worship Zeus. I need some type of physical representation of Zeus because I can't see Zeus. Right? So when you don't have a physical representation of God, because he never showed you anything, we all yearn for some type of idol. So he made Yahushua. Yahushua is essentially an idol. He's that physical representation of us. And so now we get to see him. So now we can't make a physical representation of a physical representation. That don't mean no darn sense. Like when any darn Gentile doing stuff like that. So that kind of breaks that down. Ain't no darn training. Where are we up? This is uh, Genesis chapter 45. Give me verse 1. Watch this. Because I want to talk about hope. I want to talk about hope being taken away. I'm going to talk about how we react to that. How do we deal with it? All right? Then Joseph could not refrain himself before all them that stood by him. Joseph couldn't by. do what? Refrain himself. Hope was taken away. He saw his brothers. In this case, I guess it wasn't a, a hope taken away. Right? He was moved because he saw his brother. He was actually happy. Right? He saw his brothers. Right, his brothers was there, they lived, they getting sad, you know what I'm saying? He been he been kind of poking with them and messing with them because they did some messed up stuff to him. So he started to break down. Remember, Joseph pretty much running all of Egypt right now. There was a lot of people around. Watch what happened. He couldn't refrain himself, and what happened? And he cried. Mm -hmm. Caused every man to go out from me. Was the first thing he did when he started to cry. He told everybody to get up. Y'all puts out my man. What's wrong with y'all? Very first thing he started doing, he started saying that thing. He couldn't refrain. You know what? You know what he looked like. He couldn't. He... <laughs> everybody, everybody out! Everybody out! You know what I'm saying? Just start yelling. Then he start crying. Then all right, that thing start pouring down. Let's hear what happened next. And there stood no man with him while Joseph made himself known unto his brother. Right. And so everybody went. else left, and then he cried and he made himself known to his brothers. He comfortable crying in front of his brothers. That's his family. Guess who he didn't want to cry in front of? Strangers. These Egyptians. I mean, he run the Egypt. He, he's the second in command of all Egypt. Right? So it ain't like these are unfamiliar people with him. But these not my people. I work with them. So do it look like I'm about to be crying at work? Some people do. That's crazy. What am I going to give my heart to all these people for? A man? That don't make no sense. But I mean, sometimes stuff will happen, right? Where I just can't hold that thing back. Guess what happens? Everybody out. That thing coming. Everybody out. Then I'm calling my wife. I'm calling T. Bro, this is what happened. Right? And they might over... Watch this. Watch this. 
And Joseph made himself known unto his brethren, and he wept aloud, and the Egyptians in the house of Pharaoh heard. After everybody out, you think I'll care? I told you, get out. Okay, cool. After that, ah! I'm going nuts. They hear you. That might happen to me at work. Hey, no, no, everybody, come on, come on. Just give me a moment. Yeah, get out. I get tea on. <laughs> right? They they outside the room, you know, and my nosy job, they're gonna be. <sighs> you know what I mean? You know how they act. Right? Do I care at that moment? They hear me. But watch, watch what the results is of this type of stuff. You can tell what type of man Joseph is. As soon as he start crying, what'd he do? And he whooped aloud in the Egyptians. And no, no, no. Before that. As soon as he start crying, what'd he just do? Get y'all butts out. So you know what type of man he is. I ain't giving my heart to all y'all. What's wrong with y'all? Right? You know what type of man he is. But watch the result. They heard him cry anyway. Watch the result of it. And Joseph said unto his brother, and I am Joseph. Does my father yet live? Uh-huh. And his brethren could not answer him, for they were troubled at his presence. Right? Skip skip on down a little bit. Uh, give me, give me, let's skip down about a couple verses. I don't know. For these two years has the famine been in the land. Mm-hmm. For these two years has the famine what been in six. Give me, give me about like seven. No, give me eight. So now it was, so now it was not you that sent me here, but God, and he has made me a father to Pharaoh. Uh-huh. And Lord of all his house, and a ruler throughout all the land of Egypt. Mm -hmm. Haste you and go to my father, and mm -hmm. say unto him, Thus says your son Joseph, mm -hmm. God has made me Lord of all Egypt. Come down unto me, tarry not. Watch it. And thou shalt dwell in the land of Goshen, and thou shalt be near unto me. Thou and thy children, and thy children's children, and thy flocks, and thy herds, and all that thou hast. Mm -hmm. And there will I nourish thee, for yet there are five years of famine. Lest thou and thy household and all that you have come to poverty. Watch it. And behold, your eyes see, and the eyes of my brother Benjamin, that is in that is my youth, uh, that is in my mouth, that speaks unto you. Mm -hmm. And ye shall tell my father of all my glory in Egypt, and of all that you have seen. Mm -hmm. And ye shall haste and bring down my father here. Okay. And he fell upon his brother Benjamin's neck and wept, and Benjamin wept upon his neck. Uh huh. Moreover, he kissed all his brother and wept upon them all, upon them. And after that, his brother and talked with him. He's still crying. You think these Egyptians ain't sitting here listening? Or I says. And the fame thereof was heard in Pharaoh's house, saying, Joseph. Look, hold on. What happened? The fame thereof was heard in Pharaoh's house. You don't think these people was talking? They heard him crying, and what happened? Saying, Joseph, everybody got to run in their darn mouth. They went. They took that thing all the way to Pharaoh. Watch what Pharaoh do. Joseph's brethren are come, and it pleased Pharaoh well and his servants. Mm -hmm. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, Say unto your brethren, This do ye: Lay your beasts and go, get you unto the land of Canaan, and take your father and your households and come unto me. Pharaoh came on the scene. Pharaoh heard about Joseph crying. You gotta imagine. I ain't never seen Joseph cry. Oh, his brothers here. Oh, okay. Give him this message. Watch this. Watch what Pharaoh give him. Take your father and your households and come unto me, and I will give you the good of the land of Egypt, and ye shall eat the fat of the land. Mm -hmm. Now thou art commanded, this do ye. Take you wagons out of the land of Egypt for your little ones and for your wives, and bring your father and come. Also regard not your stuff. He said also do what? Regard not your stuff. Man, leave all that junk there. What, what you gonna do, Pharaoh? For the good of all the land of Egypt is yours. You can have my whole land. Leave, man, leave all your junk. Don't, don't waste no time bringing that U-Haul truck. Leave your butts over there. Whatever you want is all yours, the whole land. Why do you think Pharaoh did that? He heard his man cry. I ain't never heard this man cry. That's how I imagine. His book ain't say that, right? But I ain't never heard a man cry. It's important for us if a man crying every single day. Right? Think about it. I mean, just think about it practically. You get a baby, right? New baby. At first, that cry a little cute, ain't it? You know what I'm saying? You got your little cry baby baby, you know what I'm saying? So, oh, it's a little cute. That thing start wearing you down after a minute. Yeah, yeah, that thing cry, that thing cry every, all the time. All the, you be like, all right, listen, that thing ain't cute no more. I mean, the first time I heard Zakai cry. I was like, at first, he didn't really cry. You know what I'm saying? First time I heard him cry, I was like, oh, look at that little cry. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Some whack little cry. That thing, you start doing that thing lonely, you know, look at that. Okay, all right, shut up. <laughs> be quiet. Oh, quiet, 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 be quiet. Quiet! <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You want to yourself and shut up. Because that thing starts to wear on you after a while. You know you get them kids that always, like, you know what I'm saying, like, always, like, 
like overdo stuff. You know what I'm saying? Like you not really hurt like that. The first time that thing is cute at first though. Right? You be like, oh, mommy, it hurts so bad. And that thing cute. You like, oh, look at you. Then they start doing that thing all the time. How you start looking at them? Man, I don't believe you. Get your butt up. Your heart starts to be hard towards that child. Do you think it's any different for a man? If a man crying, right? Man crying, crying, crying all the time, always crying. First time that thing, oh, man, that's serious. Then you do it again. Go, oh, serious again. Then you do it again. It's like, he might just be a crowd. You know what I'm saying? But it just, I mean, he just might. This thing, this thing, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a dude at my job. Cry all the time. Right? Cry all the darn time. And these fake people go to him all the time. I'm so sorry. I don't know. We'll figure it out. Soon as they leave his presence, they go, I don't think he can have this job. I think we need to move him up. Uh, this, we might need to fuck. They look at this weakness for them. They sit there and they prey on them. So now they purposely put them in situations that they can take advantage of them with. And it's wrong. But I look at them like, well, bro, you said, I tell them all the time. I tell them straight up. You setting yourself up. You better stop giving your heart. I tell them, don't give your heart to these people. Just don't. The, the average person does not have your interest. When you feel like crying, man, walk into the bathroom. Go get yourself in the stall. They'll respect that. Even if they look at it like with that, that they'll respect. The rest of the stuff, after, after a while, they start looking at it. You know what? He's just trying to get my attention. He's just trying to get some sympathy out of me. People stop trusting it because it's happening too frequent. It don't mean anything. Anything that's diluted, anything that you just keep doing, it stops having meaning. That's why the book, all through, uh, grab Proverbs from me. Let's talk. Let's talk real quick and then we get up out of here. Get Proverbs chapter 16. I lied. Give me uh, a. Give me. In the room with her? Yeah. It's Proverbs chapter 29. She's doing a lot right now. Yeah, but they still up in there lying. <laughs> I'm starting to believe she in there playing with them. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> That'd probably be her jumping around. Yeah, she's trying to make sure that nobody knock out her son. This is Proverbs chapter 29, verse 11. Watch this. Oh, yeah, she definitely is. <laughs> yeah, she is. Ready, roll. I'm about to go in there and bust in there. It's going to be her on the ground. <laughs> again, again. <laughs> Everybody else in here hearing the word. She ought to be ashamed of herself. She ought to be time of her life. Yeah. You said what? It's Proverbs chapter 29. Give me verse 11. Proverbs chapter 29, verse 11. Because first we got to establish some things, right? We got to establish. See, a lot of times when we read the book, we don't really, like the book is talking to us in a language that we don't understand. Talking to us with a stammer. So sometimes the book will say something to us and we don't even understand what it's trying to tell us, right? That's why it's important that we, you know, if we ask questions in the man, like, this has to, this has to be, this has to be for us. Like, the book is for us. Anything revealed, right? The book is for us. He told us if it's revealed, it's for us. So we got to get with it, what's it's offered to us. There's a lot of stuff that, you know what I'm saying, it ain't even ours. A lot of stuff out here just ain't even ours. We can leave that stuff alone. When the man says it's ours, listen. You know what I'm saying? You got to make every effort to make sure we get what, 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 what he offered to us. It's a proper chat. You having fun? I like every kid. Mm-hmm. I bet. <laughs> like you, you look real happy right now. No. <laughs> it's Proverbs chapter 29. Give me verse 11. A fool utters all his mind. A, a fool does what? Utters all his mind. A fool run his darn mouth. But a wise man can. I mean, you know, you know, some people just be like, you know what I'm saying? I don't care what nobody say. I'm always going to say how I feel. I'm just keeping it real. You know the people that be running their door and mouth always got something to say? I'm just keeping it real. He said a fool do what? A fool utters all his mind, but a wise man keeps it in till afterwards. I mean, if you're going to be a wise man, you're going to shut your butt up and wait. You're going to consider some stuff. That's what emotions do to us. Well, and not just negative emotions, even happy emotions. You ever got so happy and got to run in your mouth about something you ain't got no business running your mouth? Ooh, look, I'm trying to tell you my mama just won a thousand dollars. She just told you not to tell nobody that thing. <laughs> but you knew you were getting a piece of it, so that thing had you just excited. Right? It's the same thing. It's not just negative emotions, it's not just crying, not just all that stuff. You gotta like keep that stuff in check. Otherwise, you appear as a fool. You'll be sitting there running your mouth, okay, this, that, and other, da, da, da. 
good or bad, right? But you got to keep it. You got to keep some of that. The world don't deserve all of you. You keep it to the people that deserve it. You keep it to the people that you trust, the people that'll take care of you, the people that'll protect you. That's why I tell my son, no, nah, you got to cry, let's go to the bathroom. I appreciate my son for it too. Because he'll, he'll hold that thing best he can. As soon as we get to a private play, he let that thing out. And that's, that's, that is important to cry. It's important to get the stuff out. It's important to have somebody that you can vent to. It's important to have somebody that'll understand you. But not everybody. Yeah, not randoms. Not people that's going not that not people that's not gonna have your back when they don't understand it. Some stuff you just gotta be like, look, I know this is who's gonna help me. Right? I know these are the people, I know this is the group of people that's gonna guide me through this. I get to run in my mouth to everybody else. I don't know what these people are doing. These people use my stuff. You, we all have friends that use our stuff against us. We got to run in our mouth against us. You know what I'm saying? And all of a sudden, okay, but I, okay, hypocrite, but you did this, that, and the other, though. And now you just sitting here like, all right, for sure. I, I told you, okay, for sure. And now, now you really hurt. Now you really want to darn cry. Because now you feel hopeless. I ain't got no friend now. You got, we got to be careful. All this stuff, be careful. And that's what we got to teach our boys. That's what we got to teach the girls, too. Everybody. Everybody got to learn because it's safe. We got to protect ourselves. Who else we got? Who else we got? Right? Keep going. Watch this. Uh, no, actually, don't keep going. Grab a... Uh, let me grab something else here. Grab Ecclesiastes chapter 7 for me, verse 9. Is that my mom? Chapter 7? Uh, yeah, verse 7. Uh, chapter 7, verse 9. Boy, you used to cry in front of everybody. I was, I was crying for a little bit, but that's about it. As soon as I got to about, well, I ain't gonna lie. You know what I'm saying? I, outside, never. But in the house, I used to, the kid. <laughs> used to be crying. Out. I used to cry in front of my cousin. You know what I'm saying? I, I wasn't crying outside. Yeah. I was crying all the time. By the time I got old enough to like have friends and understand their friends, oh no, that thing's not happening. That thing's not happening. I remember I broke my foot. You know what I'm saying? I jumped out playing in my front yard. I broke my foot. And all my friends were playing. I was like, ugh. I was like, ooh, goodness gracious. I was like, yeah, I'm about to go in the house, y'all. We right in front of my house anyway. I was like, man, I'll catch y'all later. I'm about to go in the house. And I'm walking up the stairs. And then I get in my bed. And my mama say, what's happening? I could. Yesterday, I was, I was a man until my mama asked me what happened. That thing was done. I was like, yeah, but that's how that thing got be. I can trust my mama. My mama gonna take care of me. I get to crying out in front of these kids. They gonna make fun of me for the rest of my darn life. <laughs> Hurt my little feelings. You know what I'm talking about? I ain't got time for that stuff, man. These people don't, these people don't care out here. People cruel out here. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? People make money. That thing was the worst thing in the world getting made fun of. As a kid, just listen. <laughs> You try to avoid getting made fun of for everything. I think it's impactful. I'm like, well, you gotta stop doing that. That bullying stuff will change the trajectory of your whole life. I be seeing, I, I know some people we used to mess with when we were younger, man. Them people are different. They not like us, you know what I'm saying? People are different. I think, I think you know what I'm saying? We gotta teach you, you know what I'm saying? We gotta teach these kids how to deal with that stuff. A lot of these kids can't deal with it. They can't, somebody get to bullying them, get to talking to them a certain way, they can't deal with it it's because they put themselves in a position, now they a target. That thing's a tough thing to navigate. Like, how do you navigate? You know what I'm saying? You got to teach these kids out, and it's a new world. You know what I'm saying? It ain't like when we grew up, so we'd tell them, no, nah, son, trust me. You know what I'm saying? You look hard. This, that, that thing don't work no more. You know what I'm saying? We got we to upgrade. We got to be like, all right, what these kids doing nowadays? How they bullying work now? How they bully nowadays? Angel, how bullies work nowadays? You ever had somebody try to bully you? Yeah. what they do? Just talk mess and push me around. What'd you do back? Um, push him back. All right. They knock you out after that? No. Nah, man. What about you, TJ? How how kids bully nowadays? Huh? How do kids bully nowadays? Like pushing around. Like, like this. Keep on touching you. Yeah. <laughs> what you do in response? Huh? What you do in response? I just walk away. And if he keeps on doing it, I'll push him. And then I'm gonna tell the teacher. You tell the teacher before you push him. Hey, what you doing? Close the door. Cause otherwise that, that thing gets you in trouble. These people, these people tricky. You know what I'm saying? They mess around and push you, and then as soon as you push them back, they mess around, ah! And then you get in trouble. 
You gotta watch out for that stuff. These people trick you. You tell the teacher first. You only, you only, way, only reason you will push back is if you in a situation where you can't, you have to protect yourself and you can't do nothing else. You don't let yourself get, you know what I'm saying, destroyed out there. You know what I'm saying? That don't make no sense. But you don't try to hurt nobody either. You just try to make sure you protect it. You got opportunity to tell the teacher. You do that first. You don't, you don't go do nothing bad first and then be like, all right, listen, this is what happened. Nah, it's too late. Everybody, they gonna look at all y'all. You, you a you know, little Hebrew kid, little black kid, they gonna look at all y'all as criminals. Don't be messing with them white folks either. They good people though. Some of them good people. I'm just saying, you know what I'm saying? Be careful. It's different for us. We're a different. That thing is different for us. All right. What else we got? This is uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 9. Yeah. You hurry up. I got an RP. Surely oppression makes a wise man mad. And a gift destroys the heart. Better is the end of a thing than the beginning thereof. That's 7 9? Yeah, seven, yeah, give me 7 verse 9. Oh, my bad. All right, smarty pants. <laughs> be not hasty in thy spirit to be angry. Watch what he said. Be not hasty in thy what? Spirit to be angry. In thy spirit to be angry. That's interesting. In thy spirit to be angry, right? He said, don't be hasty in thy spirit to be angry. What is that telling you? Take your time to relax. You know? so don't get mad up every little thing. You know? Control Do your so emotions. Quick, so quick to get angry. Right? It's not just crying. It's everything. But notice, he calls it what? Spirit, right? Mm -hmm. It's our spirit. The spirit in Hebrew, what it represents is like an a unseen air. Like an unseen ruach. something. So, it's like a ruach, yeah. And the fetch, even. But it's something unseen. So it's like our emotions. Right? Our emotions are unseen. So that's what that's what the book calls our spirit. All right, a lot of times when you see the, the book refer to spirit, when it, it, not capital S spirit, right? when it's talking about the spirit of God. But a lot of times when it's talking about our spirit, it's talking about emotions. It's talking about how, how, how something is kind of energizing us to feel a certain way. And that's what emotions are, energy. Emotions are important. But we just got to make sure that we're using the emotions and the emotions not using us. Right? Because if you, your emotion take control, then you do something out of emotion without thinking. But emotions are intended to give you energy. Right? So when you get mad, you're supposed to have energy to go correct the situation or, you know, go fix something. It's supposed to give you that adrenaline. You, you know, you get mad, you get adrenaline. Right? You're supposed to use that adrenaline to go do something positive or, you know, correct the situation. When you go, get sad, it puts you in a place of calm state of mind. It depresses you. It puts you like, hmm. All right, let me now let me think some things out. That's how like it, the, our bodies are programmed to help. But what happens is when these emotions, these chemicals that's going on inside of us, they start taking control. So now we're not thinking and we're not controlling them. Watch this next one. Grab a, uh, grab a, uh, grab uh, that chemicals. Oh, oh, here you go. Mm. Oh, I set us all up, huh? Yeah, you sure did. Thank Goodness you. Goodness gracious. Hallelujah. <laughs> she ain't got her strap on it right now, do she? Start slinging that thing around the room to hit people in the forehead. <laughs> bah, bah, bah. The whole glass that thing just break right there. And be, oh, oh, oh. Sprinkling the altar. You know? <laughs> Goodness gracious. Okay. You still slinging them things? I don't believe that you ain't selling them. You, get, you get some type of commission. commission. Yeah. Whatever. Gotta get verse 10. Give me verse 10 then. Say not thou, what is the cause that the former days were better than these? For that it does not, for thou does not inquire wisely concerning this. Right? So don't be out there saying, back in the day it was way better. That book. This is all, like, when you get to reading Proverbs and Ecclesiastes, what it's trying to teach you is wisdom. Right? This is not sin. I'm not, we're not talking about sin at this point. Right? It's not like... It's not like you going to hell, this, that, and that. No, this is, this is wisdom. This is trying to teach you. This is how you best operate in the world. Yeah, because what's to come is much better than what's past already if we hold fast to the faith. And not only that, it just in terms of wisdom, right? In terms of wisdom, don't make sense to live in the past. What you going to do? How you going to get it? It's unattainable. It's a constant, it's a constant like uh, uh, reaching for something that you can't reach, Right? So you have to put yourself in a position where you say, okay, I can learn from my past. I can appreciate my past. I can even admire things about my past, but I'm not trying to make today my past, right? I'm not trying to say, okay, well, man, it used to be so much better. I just wish it was like that. That's the stuff that drives us crazy. 
living in an unreal world, right? That's that's like all that stuff is that, that's what drives us crazy. That's what I, I used to try to tell my sister all the time. Like you have to stop being unreal with yourself. Like you have to just settle the fact, like this is how it is, this is what you have to do to change it, and this is what the best case scenario could be if you did change it. You can't keep living in this world like, man, if only this didn't happen to me, or only this person didn't do this to me. You know, it's like I get it, I understand. Sure, a lot of messed up happens, messed up stuff happens. But at the end of the day, we live in right now, and you have something that you can do with right now. You can't keep on living in the past, making excuses for things that keep happening to you. Eventually, you gotta say, okay, let messed up stuff happen. That was in the past. I forgive the people who did it to me. Okay, and how do I fix it? Right? How do I make it better now? How do I protect myself? How do I keep myself from ever being in that position again? Right? A lot of it, you gotta keep your own heart. You gotta keep you. You gotta keep your emotions. Right? You gotta control yourself. It's 29 Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 29, verse 11. Did we already read that? Yeah, yeah. Proverbs chapter 16, verse 32 then. Proverbs chapter 16, verse 32. He that is slow to anger is better than the mighty, and he that rules his spirit than he that takes a city. He that rules his what? Spirit. So you see again, that spirit is talking about our emotions. Right? You slow to anger, I mean, he's better than the mighty. You rule your spirit, you will take a city. It's a line in Godfather. It said, never hate your enemies. It clouds your judgment. That's like one of the wisest lines to me. You can't hate these people. You can't hate people that do stuff wrong to you. For no, forget, let's just say, let's just, I don't want to say forget, let's just set aside all the wisdom that Yahweh Shua gave us that said don't hate our enemies. Practically, it doesn't make sense. If you have somebody against you and your judgment is clouded by hate, where you're not thinking clearly, you just operating off of emotion, oh, they're going to light your butt up. They're going to manipulate the mess out of your butt. You know what I mean? T always play around what we do if we make people mad. That's a, that's a, that's a sense of control. All right, that's what it is. Because if I know, if I know I can push your button to the point where you react out of emotion and you do something that you ain't supposed to be doing, I got you. It's done. Now we didn't do stuff with a malicious intent, but for us it was a it was a funny thing. It was an irony, right? So we could show people like you just reacted, and then we could laugh at them afterwards. Right? Okay, well you just reacted. And then make them feel like, oh. But honestly, you know what I'm saying? I think I helped those kids. <laughs> I think I helped that kid. Why would you stop somebody from being bullied? <laughs> I think I helped those kids. But no, honestly, you can you get that and it's like, okay, wait a minute. Why did I just react? Why did I do it? Tell me we don't all feel like that after we do that. I'll be sitting here talking to Tasha sometime. I'll be like, I knew she was trying to do it. Let me tell y'all what Tasha do. I'll be like having a bad day. She know I'll be having a bad day too. I'll be having a bad day just starting sitting there. And I'll be trying my hardest like, okay. Yeah, baby. And she just talking about, what's wrong, babe? Nothing, baby. I'm okay. I'm saying we good. I'm trying not to have to try to have a good day. <laughs> so then that's she gonna be like, what, babe? Are you sure you're having a good day, babe? Mwah. Messing with me. Just messing with me. So she ain't messing with me. I'll be like, Tasha, just leave me alone. See? That's what I'm talking about, Phila. You all way too young now. And now it's my fault. I'll be like, dang it, why did I do it? Why did I fall for it? Right? But that's how it works, right? We playfully do that to each other, but that's how it works. I mean, people out there that really don't have our heart in mind. They do that to us. They'll poke at us and try to get us, and then we react, and they make us look like the bad guy. We have to keep that anger in check. Right, right, T? Yeah. Right? T got some experiences. Right? People just set him up, you know what I'm saying? Just, you know what I'm saying? Do stuff, and then he reacts, and it's just like, now police being called on him. Man came there for a righteous reason, trying to do the right thing done, but people get you to react, and it's just like, now what? Right? That's why it's important in all situations that we keep ourselves. Keep ourselves. Because otherwise, then, you know what I'm saying, you're in a position where it's like, you know what I'm saying, what's, what's going to happen next? You know what I'm saying? Well, how are people going to use this stuff against me? So if you, if you know that you can't, then you just remove those people from your life? Or do you challenge yourself to still? Uh, immediately remove yourself from the situation. And then long term, if possible, remove people from your life. Absolutely. Yeah. One th uh, book says this. What does the book say? What am I thinking of, T? Goodness gracious, the thing flashed across my head. What was I thinking of? 
uh, Say bad what you company said ruins good judgment. Uh, uh, remove people from your life if you oh, he said if your right hand causes you to sin, yeah. cut it off. Right? So I always, you know what I'm saying, I always talk about the, like, I remember people used to, like the Christian used to tell me, oh, he don't mean literally cut off your hand. He just trying to tell you. The way I look at it, if I'm literally willing to cut off my hand, oh, it's nothing to cut off my sister. Yeah. It's nothing to cut off my brother. Right. Nothing to cut off. You know, anybody in my life that's causing me to sin, that's easy money. If I'm willing to cut off my arm, cut off my leg, cut off my member to keep myself from sinning, oh, it's easy money to cut off a person. <laughs> right? But that's the mindset that we have to have. Right. If my hands start tripping, this thing coming off. And if we got that mindset, it, when it comes down to it, yeah, you cut them off. You can't. Sometimes it's not possible, right? Sometimes you just have to be around people, right? Sometimes it's just it's just situations where it's like you can't really do nothing about it, I don't, right? What do you say? Uh, um, what do you, I don't pray that you take them out of the world. That's right. But you know, like in the world. We yeah, we got to deal. We got to deal with the world. I mean, to some degree, it's certain, like certain situations. Was like uh, he was like, don't be company with sinners. But he was like. I'm talking about believers. He's like, because if I'm not talking about believers, then you would need to be taken out of the world, period. Yeah, this you, know you can't do nothing about that. Right. It's always, you're always going to have standards. But yeah, that's that's how we got to think about it. It's like, man, I'll cut you off, right? I... <laughs> in that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 They just hit you real close. Yeah. 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 Y'all get dangerous right now. What you trying to say? Cause I ain't did nothing. All right, cut, cut the camera, guys. Uh, uh, let's pray out. No, I'll just give you no, a serious question. No, no, no. I mean, it come, if it come down to it, then do it. Because, no, I think the anything that comes to sin. Let me answer very, very, very clearly. Anything that causes you to sin, cut it off. Period. Your your salvation is more important than your love for another human being. Period. I don't, I don't care what the situation is. We joking around. We playing. I don't care. Cut them off. Cut her off. Whoever it is, go. Baby, I ain't cutting you off. You need to make sure my bank account's good. <laughs> 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 I need money to buy. Please, your butt ain't going nowhere. <laughs> I'll cut you off. You better go downstairs. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'll be down there later. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but no, no, seriously, to all jokes aside, anything that causes you that threatens your salvation we got a book tell us you know what i'm saying it's it's only a few things we could be selfish about one of them is salvation that's it books say work out what your own salvation they don't tell you work out nobody else's that thing that thing say work you out most high god say uh say he said remove the what remove what the wicked. you try <laughs> he remove he said remove the what out of whose eye the no, he said, you got a what? No, what do I got in my eye? I got a darn moat. I got a log in my eye. He said, remove mine at what, what order? So mine come out first. Oh, okay. And then after I do that, maybe I'll be able to what? So if there's one thing we can be selfish about, salvation. Make sure you save. Make sure you good. After you good, and you this has to be honest, right? You can't be... Trying to do nothing, you know what I'm saying, to use this as an excuse for any of us, right? But after you good in terms of salvation, then that's when you go back and you try to help the people off the out that you cut off. When I was struggling with cussing and I was trying to cuss, I cut all my boys off. Every one of them. Cold turkey. Cold turkey. I believe that some of them still hold a grudge today for it. Right? A little, you know, it's a little playful grudge, but it's still nevertheless. I think I think I, I feel I believe it's still there. At the end of the day, what I'm gonna say? I regret it. Sure, our relationship may not be the same now, but it's not supposed to be. I'm different. Right. So what? Oh well, right? But now I'm in a position where it's like, I can stand around them cussing, and that thing don't bother me. In the past, I stand around them cussing, I'd be like, oh, crap, this, that, none, and I'll start cussing. I couldn't afford it, right? Now I can stand around, you cussing, so now I'm in a position where I can help them. I'm still not going to be around their butt, but I'm at least in a position that if, I, if need be, I can stand next to you and I can tell you something. Bro, you, you need to leave that alone. Bro, your butt gonna end up right in hell if you keep on doing that. Bro, there's a better way than to do stuff like that. Bro, if that's somebody you love, you shouldn't do that. Right? I can say I can say that now. Before, I couldn't have no communication because I know what they're gonna end up doing. And I didn't have the heart to be like, nah, don't do that. It's your house. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna tell you not to cuss in your house. It's your house. I'm coming to you. Right? So it's important. Cut them off if you need to. All right?
Do that thing with long consideration, long prayer, in the word, asking all the questions that are unanswered. But if it comes to that decision, you cut anybody off that needs to be cut off. You cut anybody off that keep you from, from, from righteousness. All right? Let's get one more. I want to talk about Yahushua. I just want y'all to see how Yahushua. Y'all know Yahushua cried, right? Grab a. Uh, was moved with compassion. Grab a. Uh, people were. What does it say? Uh, she without shepherds, at it? Give me John chapter 11, verse 30. Oh, no. I got that, son. We can. No, we almost done. Relax. Relax. This is uh, John chapter 11, verse 30. Look at this black leg. There's a guy. Let me see. Let me see him black leg. Well, there's a black leg there. <laughs> now, Yahushua was not yet coming to the town, but was in that place where Martha met him. Uh-huh. And the Jews then, which were with her in the house, and comforted her. Uh-huh. Appreciate When they saw Mary, that she rose up hastily and went out, followed her, saying, She goes unto the grave to weep there. Mm-hmm. Then when Mary was come where Yahushua was and saw him, she fell down at his feet, saying unto him, Lord, if you have been here, my brother had not died. Mm -hmm. Yahshua therefore saw her weeping, and the Jews also weeping, which came with her. Mm -hmm. He groaned in the spirit and was troubled, and said, Where have ye laid him? And said unto him, Lord, come and see. Yahshua wept. He cried. Keep going. Then said the Jews, Behold how he loved him. Look at that. You think Yahshua was walking around crying all the time? But when he did cry, what did the people do? The people were moved. Oh, look how he loved her. Because it was special. The point is a man's cry has to be special. It has to be special. It just it, we can't we can't afford because a, a man has to lead, right? So a man can't afford to have his cry be worthless, right? When a man cries, that thing has to move people. If I'm crying every day, people will not be moved. So sometimes it's okay to cry every day, right? If I gotta cry every day, guess what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna cry every day. But I'm not going to cry in front of the world every day. So when we raise our sons, when we raise our daughters, we have to instill that into them. Control your, your emotions. You got to cry? No. Not, don't cry just because you're not getting your way with something. That's not worth it, right? Save your cry. You're going you're gonna to do a whole lot of crying in life. Make sure it's worth it. Those, let's figure out a different way to handle that. You got an emotion of, I didn't get my way. Let me show you how to deal with that emotion better. Not by crying, not by throwing a tantrum, not by, because that's all anger, that's, that's, um, that's uh, sorrow, all that. That's not the proper way to handle that. What you really want to do is redirect that. Use that energy to say this or to do that, however it works in our household. But we have to train our kids to do that. And we have to communicate with them. We have to open up to them. We have to make sure that we relate to our kids. Otherwise, they don't understand us. Then that creates a wall between us. Right? My son grew up. If I'm, if I'm looking at him and I'm not helping him deal with his emotions, because one thing I do with my son, if he got to cry, don't I talk to him? If I say, don't leave me out here just angry, good and gracious, right? She sleep, she sleep. Yeah. <laughs> my boy got to cry, I pull him to the side every single time. We was at a, what was that, a party? I was, it was some party, he was about to start crying, I took him right to the bathroom, real quick. Didn't want nobody to see him. And it's not that I don't care, I don't really care if anybody sees him at his age, but I want him to see that. I want him to see I, it's important to me, son, that I take you out of everybody's way. Then I sat in that bathroom with him and I talked him through it. Okay, what are you feeling? Let's understand it. Why do you feel that way? Okay, well, let's, okay, this is how you should handle it next time. Right? It was difficult at that point. But now he gets to a point where he holds on to that stuff. And now he gets it and he'll tell me, he'll pull me to the side and be like, Dad, this is how I felt. It's important. They have to, we have to give him an outlet. Right? They got to have an outlet because otherwise it creates a wall. They, everybody is going to find an outlet. No matter what. Everybody is going to be an outlet. We have to make sure that the outlet that our people find is safe. We can't afford for an outlet to be drugs. We can't afford for an outlet to be, you know, going out trying try to fight somebody, trying to drop an elbow on somebody just because you're mad. That stuff is crazy. But this is what will happen to our kids. This is what will happen to us. Not just our kids, to us. We will find an outlet. Like, it's going to happen. You know what I'm saying? It's, it, 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 when we're in a position of being, you know, we just talked about we're only human. 
when we're in a position of human, I'm a human being, and we don't know how to think spiritually, we're going to do human crap. We can't afford that. Especially not with these kids. These kids can, this, this, listen, this world right now is nuts. And maybe it was nuts when we was kids too and we were just in it so it didn't feel like that. I'm just saying, these kids, wow. I went to a party watching my niece, I mean, my, my, my younger cousins and all that. Bro, they grown now, bro. That thing, I'm looking like, goodness gracious, this is insane. Yeah, I mean, and is all good. of them is wow. I remember mean, those little kids asking all kind of dumb questions. Yeah, bad butts. Yeah. <laughs> right? It's just like, man, just seeing that turn into nap. You know what I'm saying? Like, everybody got a blunt in their mouth. Everybody got, got alcohol. Right? So now it's like, okay, now we have to be in a position where how do we protect our kids from that? From feeling like they have to run to that. Feeling like they have to be a part of that crowd. Right? The average of our friends is depressed. The average of them. Absolutely. The average of them is depressed. It's hidden. It's hidden behind alcohol. It's hidden behind weed. But they always got to have a blunt in their mouth. Why? Yeah. That's an outlet. Right? That's, that comes from not being able to properly deal with what they have. They're not, like the book say, they're not taking rule over their spirit. God gave that to us. If he gave, if it's us, if he gave it to us, whose is it? I got that. Got to control it then. He gave it to us. He told me I could do it. I'm going to sit here and be like, I can't. That's crazy. That means I don't believe the man. Got to do it. Right? So we take our time. We find the appropriate outlets. We find, we find, we find our loved ones. And we, we assist each other and we do whatever we can to support. I saw the poem that, Anoka, uh, uh, that you posted from Anaka. That was special. I saw that thing. I said, you know what? That works. Right? That works. That's the type of support that we got to have. We got to be able to reach out. Tasha been telling me everything. Right? That's all right. I'm going to snitch you out. I'm right. rather you right on out. She tell me everything. That was smooth. Right? But I appreciate that she there. Right? I appreciate that that that... You was there for her, and you've been there for her. All that stuff. Even when we were going through our stuff, I remember. Never forget it. All that stuff is special to me. It has to be special. We have to be able to be there for one another because otherwise, if we not there, somebody else gonna be. And when you get to when you get to open yourself up to somebody else who don't have no interest in your heart, then something bad gonna happen. They gonna get you to go do something that you ain't supposed to be doing. Get you to go do take some drug. Go. You know what I'm saying? You know all this stuff. And we all got old friends, don't we? So how easy if our new friends, right, that's supposed to be righteous ain't there for us, then all of a sudden, all right, well, you know what I'm saying? Hey, smile, bro. What you doing tonight? Dynamite, man. What you doing? I just got some stuff. You know what I'm saying? Start opening up. Then compromise come. All right? No time for it. No time for it. Any questions? All right, let's pray out.